Henceforth, I am to improve our lot by harmonizing the average man with the order of the universe. To walk him down a quiet road, to lead him to safe and sober thoughts, to quiet his mind and cool his impassionate heart. Be he God-fearing or Godless, this new order will encompass all and seek to improve man by aligning his needs with the ebb and flow of nature itself. This is my hope. This is my vow. King Alfred, circa 878. Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 66 and today we're going to talk about the historic king of the Anglo-Saxons, Alfred the Great. King Alfred is one of numerous historical characters within Assassin's Creed Valhalla and because of this we have two aspects of this person to look at. A historical one and one that we see of him within Assassin's Creed. Historically, Alfred was born in either 848 or 849 to King Æthelwulf and his wife Osber. As the youngest of six with four older brothers, he was not expected to become king. He did go to Rome for the first time in 853 and then again the following year with his father, where they also spent time at the court of Charles the Bald, King of the Franks, returning in 856. Alfred's public life began in 865 when his brother Ethelred became king at the age of 18. This was when Alfred was given the title of Secondarius and recognized as his brother's successor. In 868, Alfred married Aylesworth, daughter of a Mercian noble, and the pair went on to have five children. Starting that same year, Alfred is recorded as fighting alongside Ethelred against the great heathen army in multiple battles until his brother died in April 871. Shortly after his brother's death, Alfred ascended to the throne of the West Saxons, inheriting the defense of Wessex. While Alfred was busy with the burial of his brother, the Saxon army was defeated in an unnamed spot and again at Wilton in May while he was with the army. This led to Alfred making peace. The Danes withdrew from Reading in 871 and made winter camp in London. Five years later, the Danes under Guthrum, Astel, and Anwen took control of Wareham and Dorset. Alfred blockaded the city, but was unable to take it and negotiated for a peace that the Danes ended up breaking by killing hostages and leaving in the night. Though they were eventually defeated in Exeter, forcing the Danes to withdraw back to Mercia. While the Danes were in Mercia, Alfred spent Christmas of 877 in Chippingham, though the Danes found out and attacked in January 878. Alfred himself did get out of Chippingham, and by Easter, was in Althony, planning a campaign of resistance. Alfred started to turn the tide of the war, and by the end of May 878, the Treaty of Wedmore was negotiated with Guthrum. By 879, the Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum was signed, drawing the Danes back to East Anglia, and converting Guthrum to Christianity. While Alfred continued to fight the Danes on and off for the rest of his life, it's not the only thing that he's known for. He reorganized the military system of Wessex to allow for faster raising of the fjords and to allow them to be deployed faster across the country by using a network of boroughs, or a specialized fortified place in tactical areas throughout the kingdom. In 896, he ordered the construction of a small fleet of longships that were twice the size of Viking warships, though this is not often considered the birth of the English navy. Alfred also tried to revive learning in his kingdom by recruiting clerical scholars from Mercia, Wales, and other places, establishing a court school to educate his own children and the nobles of his court, and also attempted to require literacy to those who held positions of authority. Right around 886, after Alfred took London from the Danes, it is believed by almost all of his chroniclers that the Saxon people of England submitted to Alfred leading him to be the king of the Anglo-Saxons instead of the king of the West Saxons. Alfred held the title of king of the Anglo-Saxons until his death on October 26, 899, at the age of either 50 or 51. Within Assassin's Creed, Alfred is shown within two places, the novel Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Gurgmund's Saga, and within the game Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where he is voiced by Tom Lewis. And it is because of this 
that we are headed into spoilers for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. While a lot of Alfred's life within Assassin's Creed is the same as the historic counterpart, there are some differences, but for the most part, what we already know is expanded on. For instance, we know that in one of his early trips to Rome, he was blessed by Pope Leo IV himself. The Pope recounted his victory against Saracen pirates at the Battle of Ostia in 849. This account made a lasting impression on Alfred, who, as the youngest child of King Aethelwulf and his fifth son, had little expectations of becoming king. So Alfred devoted himself to learning and other scholarly pursuits. When the Vikings started to raid Wessex, Alfred went to battle with his brother King Ethelred, proving himself a capable commander, winning the battles of Reading and Ashdown, though he did receive a devastating loss at the Battle of Wilton. After Ethelred died from wounds he sustained during the Battle of Merton, late in April 871, Alfred not only became the King of Wessex, he also became the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. While his brother and father before him ran the order from a place of agreement, Alfred did not agree with the order's ideals and beliefs, believing them to be sacrilege to the one true God. Because of this, he started to devise a plan to rid England of the order. In this plan, Alfred posed as a spy with the code name Poor Fellow Soldier of Christ and recruited the Reeve of Winchester, a man named Goodwin, as a personal informant and used the study in the Old Minster as a base. Right around 873, Alfred responded to a request of reinforcements from Lady Aidwin of Mercia, arriving to sign Bell Castle after she was killed. The arrival of his army forced the attackers, led by Sigurd Triborn's son and Eivor Varen's daughter, into a parley. During this parley, Sigurd put forth the exchanging of each army's best warriors to prove peace between the two and to ensure both armies retreated from the area. Alfred agreed, but before Sigurd named his man, the paladin Folke came forth and convinced him that Sigurd was the only man he needed. After some squabbling between the two groups, they agreed to the terms and Sigurd was put into Folke's care. Over the next four years, Alfred sent letters under the guise of the poor fellow soldier of Christ that led Eivor to remove the order's influence within the cities of London and Jorvik and watched as she not only removed the order from those cities, but from England as a whole, and in 877 met with Eivor herself in the Old Minster. During this meeting, Alfred feigned ignorance about the order, and after learning of Folke's death at the hands of Eivor, he handed her a letter that he wrote as the good fellow soldier of Christ. Within the letter, it was explained that Alfred's life was threatened by three other members of the order. Alfred offered Eivor all the silver that she could carry if she removed them from Winchester and set her to meet Goodwin, though he had disappeared trying to keep these members of the Order away from Alfred. After the death of Hilda, known within the Order as the Quill, Alfred gave a speech at Witten Hall about the next Bishop of Winchester. During the speech, Eivor assassinated Alfred, known within the Order as the Sakes. After Eivor saved his life, Alfred met her at the Old Minster and had Goodwin present her with a silver cross, and then told her to convert to Christianity and live in peace, or die as a pagan. After she refused, Alfred left the minster and put the city on alert. Alfred continued to fight the Vikings, but after taking the loss at the Battle of Chippingham in January 878, which saw the death of Goodwin, Alfred went into exile. Living as a commoner in the village of Althony, Alfred wrote a letter as the good fellow soldier of Christ, inviting Eivor to the village to discuss the status of the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. When Eivor arrived, Alfred was nowhere to be seen, but after resting under a tree, found Alfred making soul cakes. The pair spoke about no one in the village knowing that he was king, and Eivor put together that Alfred was the good fellow soldier of Christ himself. Alfred didn't comment on this role, but asked her to take a walk with him and discuss the war that was going on with Eivor stating that it was over. Alfred corrected her, stating that she had just stopped fighting, and others were brewing more plots. The pair continued to speak more about how Alfred feels about living as a commoner, with Alfred stating that he thought it was a blessed life. As Eivor started to grow short with the conversation, she demanded to learn who the Grand Magister was. 
Alfred admitted to her that it was him, and that it was a title he didn't want. Giving her his order medallion, he told her how he felt about the order and their views, and gave her the key to his study so she could understand why he did what he did, and that now that the order was all but destroyed, there was room for a greater idea to take its place. That a universal order inspired by God for the betterment of man could rise. Just before Alfred was yelled at for burning the soul cakes, he told Eivor that she had saved England, and though she believed that England was no more, he was sure that in time those who accept God will flourish, while all others will fall away, and that if she is to stay in England, she would one day be her subject. While it is possible we see Alfred within the DLCs of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I find it unlikely, as they're to be set in Ireland and France. Though it is possible that we get a letter or mention from him to lead her to these places, as they are mentioned within Valhalla, as having members of the Order of the Ancients within them. While Alfred is an important character within Assassin's Creed for being the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients, and for organizing its downfall from within, there are some letters in his possession, and some other things that he says, that have larger implications within the lore of the series. After he gives Eivor the key to his study, she finds a letter from Alcuin, a leading scholar in the court of Charlemagne, to Charlemagne himself, the Holy Roman Emperor, dated May 10, 804. This letter implies that the Order of Ancients know more about the Isu and their ways at this time than almost anyone we've met in the modern day. Add to this Alfred's commentary on the letter. It seems to me that Charlemagne himself could be a member of the Order of the Ancients at this time, if not the Grand Magister himself. Alfred's commentary mentions that the title of the Grand Magister should have went to King Elia of Northumbria when his father King Aethelwulf passed, but because King Elia was already dead, it fell to his brother and then to him. Without reading this part of the letter, you assume from the dialogue that the Grand Magister is a title that was passed down alongside the Crown of Wessex. But adding this idea that Elia was meant to take the position, it brings into question exactly how the leaders were chosen, a question I can't even begin to speculate on. Another interesting point within Alfred's commentary is the mention of the Father of Understanding, the Mother of Wisdom, and the Sacred Voice of the Isu, and Alfred believing that they have blasphemies, and that there is only the Father of Understanding, and that he is the Lord above, and that he is order incarnate. Add to this the things he says to Eivor about there being room for a greater idea to take the place of the Order of the Ancients, it all hints to King Alfred having a hand in starting the Templar Order that we know today. Historically, the Knights Templar were formed almost 250 years after we last see King Alfred, and were also known as the good fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. We also see the Templars in Assassin's Creed asking for guidance from the Father of Understanding, and never mentioning the Mother of Wisdom or the Sacred Voice, a sediment that Alfred started, stating that the only Father of Understanding being the Lord above. The last bit that ties into this is a line from Alfred about the idea he's thinking of being a natural and divine order inspired by God for the betterment of man. To me, this sounds like something that over time could have been twisted to be used by the Templars to guide them to build their new world order, and why by the time of the first Assassin's Creed game, it still sounds like the Templars are looking for the same thing as the Assassins, even if they go about gaining peace in a way the Assassins would not do. Throughout Alfred's life, all he wanted to do was serve God, and when he became Grand Magister, he hated the order that he was a part of, choosing to tear it down and building something new that didn't idolize what he felt was blasphemy. What do you think of Alfred and the letters in his study? Let me know in the comments below, on Twitter, or in a podcast review. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, please subscribe and share this podcast with others. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC, and you can find those links in the show notes below. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.